Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here on this sort of a new campaign in a new mod called the Pax Britannica, an Imperial Timeline in which we're going to attempt to play as the United Kingdoms of Germany. In which you can read about the features and the situation of course here, 1933, not 1936, but 1933. So it was defeated in the first Franco-German War, unfortunately, back in the day. There was a war of consolidation, or wars of consolidation. And then, uh, special thanks to everyone else who made it. Close, and we'll begin. Disable Super Vents Audio. Due to the Super Vent Audio cues containing some potentially copyrighted music, you can disable the Super Vents now. Uh, for now, it'd probably be okay to apologize if, if, if you wanted us to not disable it, but I don't know if I can keep that, keep this video on here um, on YouTube if, uh, if it's copyrighted. But anyways, we shall begin with the focus. No. The abdication crisis. Oh. Well, we're led by a name, name guy. Name guy. Guy named Rudolph II. We have a long depression. We have a libertine culture. We have Bundestag gridlock. Significant political violence. Enough dead heroes for the time. And extraterritorial dividends, which is kind of like legation cities. And that's pretty much it. 45 divisions. We have 26 infantry divisions, which seems all right with me. And then we have some tanks. A combat with not very good. Some motorized, we have them at 18 combat, which is pretty decent. And then some cavalry. Uh, eh, that's okay for now. And then we have some colonial garrisons with light infantry. And some mountaineers. Uh, 12 combat with, so. Overall, not bad. Not great, but not bad. Um, let's see what we're going to do about these guys. Kaito? Yes, Kaito. Uh, apparently, the French aren't looking too happy with us. So that's fine with us. Let's find some generals. Oh, time to go on, I guess. Ellen Rommel, huh? Von Manstein, Model. He's reckless. Zayner? Zayner can lead that group. Um, infantry dude. Any more infantry guys? Von Sect. Grunta. And then some sort of uh, politically connected. Matinee reinforcements. Burma. Cool. And you should be led by. Uh, who? Von Rundstedt. Ludendorff. A cause new year's address. As New Year began, celebrations throughout Germany have begun to peter out. Early in the morning, Kaiser Rudolf II appeared before a gathered crowd in Frankfurt. They delivered his New Year's address. His speech contained little in terms of tangible promises to the people, keeping in line with his generally apolitical stance, but a particular note was his consistent references to the need for the more modern leadership of the Empire. <clears throat> These cues, uh, coupled with the Kaiser's general withdrawal from public life, has led to concerns about the nobility of weakness. Among the nobility of weakness, though the Kaiser's rebuffed any concerns from his advisors to the contrary, it has become something of an open secret that the Kaiser sought retirement from his position for this some time. The Kaiser's retreat from publicity has led to greater indirect power being vested in the hands of the autonomous kingdoms with King Ruprecht of Bavaria, supposedly mocking the Kaiser's feminine and weak for focusing more on his family life. Regardless, the government is not running rumors, and Chancellor Stresemann Stress believes that he can finally push his reform plan through their Bundestag this year. Perhaps 1933 will finally be our year. We're not getting division, so we'll go with infantry for now. Uh, before we let time continue to go on, let's see. Ships are all training, which is nice. Planes and stuff. Goodbye. There you go. Duplicate it again, because you can. Uh, okay, well, bombers are fine. Do that as well, except you will come down to here. And there you go. Train, 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 train. Train until you're dead, pretty much. And then we'll have some casts, which will be good. Oh, I think I need more than one. And then we will have some naval bombers. Good. Red rides in the Rhineland. Political violence not have heard of in Germany, and almost a decade of economic downturn has led to many instances of rioting in Koblenz, however. A series of red riots rapidly got out of control, leading to nearby nearly 25 deaths and dozens of injured. Relief efforts in the Rhineland have been ongoing for the last year due to crop failures, and the region continues to suffer from one of the nation's higher poverty rates. According to witnesses, bread being distributed in poorer neighborhoods of Koblenz escalated into violence when bread supplies began to run out. After being denied their rations, reportedly several men assaulted the relief workers before being shot by police. In the ensuing chaos, Four police officers were tackled and beaten while relief officers were ransacked. Minister President Goebbels has sent a furious letter to the offices of Frankfurt demanding the deployment of the National Guard at Koblenz. I suppose we can spare some reservists. So, we have unrest, huh? Right now, what is this? Party is part of the leading coalition which is currently rules over the nation. Center coalition, center coalition. 
This part is currently banned. The Neo Imperialists under Rudolf II. They're everyone's under Rudolf II. Uh, liberals. Um, Rhenish unrest. Do we see that anywhere? Infrastructure investments. Oh, that's kind of cool. Military investments. Industrial investments. Huh. Examine Great War tactics. With the world seemingly continuously shifting towards general war, war once more, our government should examine policies in our armed forces and see how we can improve them. Many global militaries, despite being despite learning lessons from the Great War, are still in a state of stagnation. The mass adoption of armored land ships is limited, and many general staff officers fill with men still trapped in 1910. The future warfare is mechanized. We must modernize our military, national military in order to keep up. Decisions made below contribute to the modernization of the armed forces, representing the laws tab. Uh, decisions will be increased to the modernization in varying degrees, and upon hitting 100%, you'll advance to the next stage of modernization. Oh, crap. Our current military mil reform rate will begin to improve. Well, I guess you might as well, right? We need more guns to do this one, right? No. That's not have enough guns. Oh. Oh, there's different states here. The United States, king the Kingdom of Germany, is a federation of German states, under which many former Austrian-aligned kingdoms have maintained autonomy under their local rulers. Though once this decentralized system transformed Germany to a center of political thought and culture, now autonomy has become a crutch for the German state. The ongoing economic depression has reignited nationalism in many parts of the strongest states, some of whom begin to entertain the ideas of going it alone. In order to pass meaningful reforms to centralize the German government, unrest in the major kingdoms must be kept below 50% in order to pass centralization reforms. These reforms will be preventing further unrest, and at least in that regard, stabilize one aspect of German politics. So, unrest is that. Um... All right, cool. Need political power to reduce unrest. 15, 15, 15, 5, 20 in Elsass, which makes sense. Also, we do have the Kingdom of, or Independent State of Prussia here too, led by Philip Buller. French monarchy reinstated. Ethnic tensions, living under Germany's shadow. So, I, I forget which ones have any folks read. Is it France or any folks read yet? Led by Charles Morales now. They do have a unique focus tree as well as Britain, which we do want to play as Britain eventually. Ah, oh, look at this guy. How oh, handsome. Death of the King. Well, alright. The Kaiser calls on Strassmann. Strassmann met with the Kaiser earlier this morning over lunch and returned to his office visibly shaken. One question, he stated that the Chancellor confided, or the Kaiser confided in him. They planned to abdicate the throne. According to the Chancellor, the Kaiser was open that the stress of rule in an advancing age began to severely affect his health. His statements are not without merit, Strassmann stated, as the Kaiser had been hospitalized in 1930 following a bout of pneumonia. Though the incident was largely kept out of the papers, the event had made His Majesty acutely aware of his morality. Though there are no legitimate concerns regarding succession, Strassmann believes that the abdication is exactly the kind of chaotic mess we can't afford right now. Oh, crap. Well, that's not good. We're still going to build some civvies. These are civvies. So... Oh, wow. Ah, uh, Kaiser Rudolf advocates a throne. When the news reached the people, most did not know how to respond. Confused, sad, fearful of the future. When it was the last time the Kaiser abdicated? Did it ever happen? Now people were remembering one important detail surrounding all of this. The Kaiser only one heir, his daughter Elizabeth Marie. A woman, after 250 years, a woman would never come would come again to bear the child of Kaiser. However, everyone knew she would not become the next Maria Theresa. While personal friends often give her the nickname of Erzi, the public and especially great doubters call her the right princess. As Elizabeth has made some years ago publicly that she believes in the values of socialism, peace, and unity. Despite being forbidden to join a party, she has uh, several contacts and friends in the Labour Party, and she herself organized food banks for the poor people during the Depression. Despite the protests of the politicians, Rudolf insisted that she would succeed him as Kaiserin. And so, when all Germans were able to see the coronation of the new Kaiserin on TV, it was not unfounded to say that they had the same thoughts in these moments. What will happen now? A new era for our nation. Today, the unthinkable has happened. Kaiser Rudolf has announced that, effective immediately, he will abdicate the throne. And in his old age, his majesty feels that he can no longer properly execute the duties of the throne, and the throne will soon pass to his only child, Princess Elizabeth, though this alone would not be a great crisis for our country. The unstable nature of this all has caused Gustav Strassmann and his cabinet to resign. For the German constitution, fresh elections must be held soon to form a new government, even as the political situation has become increasingly polarized without Rudolf's guiding hand at the helm. Seems the months ahead will be a town of chaos. Ah, oh, a woman. Elections. That's Strassmann's government having resigned. The time has now come for the German people to elect a new government. Though more minor parties do exist, the next government will likely be formed by one of the three major parties of Germany, the Socialist SP. C commands a great deal of support from the working class, and promises... A program of extensive reforms to increase workers' rights, centralize the nation, and nationalize key industries. 
the liberals. In the UDP, hope to provide a progressive future for Germany, proposing economic liberalization, massive reforms to the education system, and new measures to improve our military and fight extremists. Finally, the arch-conservative DV promises to fight against a generative modernism, creating a world-class army, a war economy, and strengthen the power of the government. The elections are predicted to be close, and whoever emerges victorious will certainly do so by the skin of their teeth. Only God knows what the future has in store for Germany in the royal marriage of Edward VIII. The dignitaries from across Europe arrived in London today to celebrate the royal marriage of King Emperor Edward VIII to hell to... Ooh. Helen von Hohenzollern. One of several princesses of Prussia, Helen's marriage with the British king further cements the ties between the British royal family and Germany. While not a member of Germany's ruling royal family, the Habsburgs, Helen's descendants from the Hohenzollern family of Prussia is no less prestigious. More importantly, the Hohenzollern's Protestantism is much less to of a barrier to a royal marriage than the Catholic Habsburgs. As if the royal family wasn't already German enough. As if. As if. Very good. Thrasimans resigns, the government fails and falls. Gustav Thrasimans has given the new Kaiser his appeal to resign from his duties as Chancellor. With political terrorism rising, the economic depression is still ongoing, and all the drama around the Kaiser. And, uh, Gustav has determined that he's not the right man for the job anymore. With Thrasimans' resignation, it's clear that the other liberal ministers would leave as well, and the coalition between the SB and the UDP would be no more. Despite this, Elizabeth has decided to accept Strassmann's resignation. While more political turmoil and elections are not the thing the nation needs more right now of, the Kaiser thinks Germany needs a new government to change the rusty gears it's been running up for so long now. Franz Blücher will temporarily take over the Chancellery and Liebknecht. Müller and Kohl have decided to maintain the ministry's positions until the next government's been voted into power. It's all collapsing now. It's all coming together. It's all coming together for better or for worse. Alright, anything else? Ah, election schedule. For the fall of our government. New actions or elections have been called and scheduled so that people can decide a new government. In approximately one month, elections will be held throughout the King United Kingdom of Germany. We thought that with victory in the Great War, nation's golden age would finally begin. However, nothing like this, of course, truly happened. In the last decade, the nation finally experienced a long economic depression, resulting in large parts of the population being dragged down suddenly into poverty. Our relations with our old allies have stagnated. Britain turned their focus on the colonies and Russia began to subjugate their own people and increasingly see us as a rival. Our vision for a peaceful Europe, or peaceful Europe where cooperation and unity could shine broke down was immediately due to uncaring and self-centered politicians, in truth. Uh, the last years have been nothing but stagnation. The German people want change. They want uh, to bring back Germany to greatness. They may be exploiting the true potential of this nation's industry, the establishment of the European alliance, uh, the normalization of political stability, or to have a nation capable and ready to defend itself against uh, the growing dark clouds of Europe. The people have to decide the fate of the nation. Elections have been concluded. The only way forward. Oh, I guess we have to wait now. Um, I guess we'll see. You know, No guarantees that we'll get what we want, but you know, you never know. Hopefully we'll get something soon. It's only February, which means we're going pretty darn slow right now. But, you know, whatever. We're going pretty darn slow. We have no political power. We don't have very much fuel. We have, like, no supply. What's well, not to love? And I apologize if we're not going down the right the way you guys want us to. But it, it is what it is, I guess. I don't know. Jim Federation. New chapter. The only way forward. Thinkers of poets. Begin to improve a small amount. Jim, Germany, the future is here. I get a research slot. For the first time... Oh, the Great Balkan War. Look at that. Nice. Cool. Uh, truly united and eager for war. Atheist Jacobins Unionists. Jews know your enemy German Volk. Max looked at the banner hanging outside the DV party office with concern. As a Jew himself, Max was naturally rather turned off by the message and was a proud Great War veteran and a proud Jew, a prouder Jew. He certainly wasn't any of the other three. The DV supporters, however, cared little for what Max thinks. Loved by the eccentric reactionary Mar Arthur Müller von den Bruck. The DV are reactionary to the core, militaristic, anti-Semitic, and openly elitist. The DV is contempt for the democratic system, but hopes they use democracy to advance its agenda, strengthening what they see as a true Germany. Though some might denounce their message as extremism. Many of the aristocracy and even the lower class are attracted to their nationalist rhetoric, especially in Austria and the Catholic regions of Upper Germany due to the DV's centralist and Catholic supremacist views. A DV victory would certainly be a victory for the old ways, Germany overall. Rooting out extremists. I don't know, maybe I'll do this several different times, you know. Try out different Germany campaigns. French troops in Lorraine. The French army entered the militarized region of Lorraine and are closing in on a common border. The blatant breach of this peace treaty is after the war and deserves retaliation. However, it seems like our former allies do not care enough about this issue to threaten France. It seems like we would be alone. Furthermore, even our people do not seem to be eager renewing tensions with France over this issue. The people want solutions for the current well-being and not another unnecessary bloody war. Maybe we should let this pass. The French state has no position to attack us anyways. They issue diplomatic protests. 
socialists reorganized. The workers marched through the streets, clutching both red flags and the flag of Germany. At the front of the march, a group of workers unfurled a banner depicting a portrait of famous socialist Otto von Bismarck with the text, Liberty for the German Worker, Liberty for Germany. The SB, though explicitly anti-capitalist and belonging to the very left of the political spectrum, is just as eager to praise democracy and has denounced violence and extremism. Rather than working against a system, the leaders believe that only th through democracy can the German people achieve a fair and equitable society through socialism. Surprisingly, the partisan has... Uh, not only has the support of much of the working class and trade unions, but also from the Kaiser and herself. She views the SB's uh, socialism and pan-Europeanism as a path to a peaceful democratic Europe with Germany as a centerpiece. The SB's victory would take Germany to its core, but could, be, could it be her salvation? For Germany and the Europe. They also have the National Union Party. They also have a National Union Party, founded in 1925 after the ultra-nationalist coup in France has been making moves throughout the province to organize anti-German resistance. group, headed by Henri Barbet, as generally known for their vocal and militant demands for the return of Alsace to the French state. The same noble... To Notable stances are also what led to the party being banned by the German government. Driven underground, the ALNU has become more akin to a terrorist organization. It's an open secret that the funding comes from the French state, and they've used this funding to launch bombings and assassinations across Alsace in an effort to turn public opinion against the German government. You lost the war, get over it. Not good. Liberals begin their campaign. The Independent Democratic Party, their UDEP for sure, have taken to the race, taking up the legacy of the German Liberal Union. Oh, look at this. Oh, I think uh, China is really exploding. So, I've taken to the race. Upon taking the, uh, the legacy of the German liberal tradition, their leadership campaigns for the total renovation of <clears throat> German economic, political, and social systems, denouncing radicals on the left and right alike, the slogan, the UP, the UPD, the only way forward, has quite an impact on our nation's political scene. Part is especially popular among the little middle class and urban bourgeoisie for the plans to cut taxes and privatize government holdings and pass relief really acts for businesses and the poor alike. They've also gotten some support from the local regionalists and state monarchies who view the UPD more conciliatory and diplomatic approach to centralization as a better alternative to the more radical SB and DV. Can the UPD pull Germany into the future? Protecting the fire of Germany. National Revolutionary Alliance. Kai E. Jacobins, though. What are Jacobins, really? Officer recruitment campaign. Begin to improve by small amount. Improve by small amount. Give them award time land ships. Coal workers in Zwickau demand better working conditions. The coal miners in Zwickau have gone quiet these days. The coal workers demand better conditions uh, regarding the safety. The coal works in Zwickau and the surrounding areas are some of the largest in Germany and the Saxon King Kingdom heavily depend on the production. But right now, no coal is being mined there due to extensive oh, <clears throat> expansion and the growing desire to extract more and more coal to suit the demands of a growing industry. It seems like all the safety standards in this endeavor have been forgotten. New automatic equipment creates gas which, which damages the lungs of anyone who breathes them in. And the massive coal diggers are not operated by the well enough trained equipment, causing uh, several cases of human accidents. Basic commodities are missing for several workers and so much more. These workers are now striking, demanding better conditions, but this will be quite costly in the extraction of more coal needed immediately. The voting begins. Across Germany, men enter their local polling stations to decide the future of Germany. Notably, women are absent from the lines, an issue that will certainly be on the minds of many a voter's wife, as her husbands cast their vote. Many newspapers are predicting a very close race, with all three major parties boasting significant support across socio-economic divides. Despite this, election night is predicted to be a largely peaceful affair, and police are watch on watch in all major cities to dissuade any troublemakers from trying to disrupt the democratic process. The only question remains, which party should claim victory in former next government? Well, UPD. DV. When you're off, a new chapter. Remove Adolf Fischer. All the unrest will increase by 10. Well, unrest is going to be increased by 10 no matter what. Well, and DV. Well, you know what? I'm probably going to go to DV because Dolce Volks. I want, I want conflict. I want conflict. Stuff like that. So I apologize if we're not going the way you want. If you want about this, please go right ahead. Getting rid of Elizabeth. Uh-oh. 
The victory of the DV has shaken Elizabeth to her core. She hoped that a new Cosmo would be able to inspire the Germany, uh, the people of Germany, and convince them of their hopes and dreams, but they opted to happen instead of rise of support for the liberal and socialist ideas The people were disturbed by them and decided to vote against them. In a rejection of Elizabeth's worldview, the people distrusting the Red Menace largely decided to back a single party of the right in hopes to stop the further weakening of Germany. Elizabeth broke and weakened, furthermore unwilling to cooperate with the new DV government. She cannot remain Kazarin. Fighting the Red Terror. Uh, what is this? Stability? I like stability. Less research speed. Ooh. Basic welfare state with no more moderate welfare state. Um. Uh, radical unions, revolutionary socialists, Hungarian spies, dangerous Jacobins, our nation is one under siege from every weapon the left can throw it against us. They attack a government, organize strikes, and arrives with impunity. This must end at once. We will pull every available resource into reinforcing our police forces and legitimize the Fry Corps to support them. Are the reds think they can inflict terror on innocent Germans, we will show them a terror like the likes of which no socialist has ever seen before. So, once again, I do apologize for not going the way you want us to. It just. I want to try all three paths eventually, so. Elizabeth Short Reign. Failure. That was how the reign of the Kaiser and Elizabeth I will be remembered. She wanted to do what was best for the people of Germany, dreams of workers in the streets celebrating the better conditions and the shining beacon of liberty in Europe standing up to all those who fought against them. But she had failed. The cries of the workers will go off forever unheard. The very radical ideologies that threatened liberty on the continent have tainted the seats of the government. She sat in her large imperial office, decorated in all manner afforded. Two, a leader of such a major power. If a lowly peasant had seen this room, they think the gates of heaven had greeted them. She looked at the various beauties of this room and gold in the pillars, pale white paint, luxurious seats, and pillows to go with them. But she traded away in a second to save Germany, but now it's all over. Your Majesty spoke one government official who sat in front of her desk. We are waiting your signature. Elizabeth sighed. She looked out the window, seeing the marching tides of nationalism everywhere. Propaganda posters, armed guards patrolling the streets. It was worse than seeing the capital burn. With a heavy heart, she sat at her desk, looking at the document that was pushed towards her. It was filled with bureaucratic nonsense to try and make those reading it sign it out of boredom. But she knew exactly what it was saying, for she was not a fool. In essence, signing the document was one thing, application. If you sign right now, we can guarantee that you'll be allowed to live in internal exile at one of your summer homes, on the condition you are retired completely from all political action and comply with your security. I know, Elizabeth said coldly, silencing the government officials. She gripped the provided fountain pen and looked down at the bottom, the empty line where she had to sign her name. With a heavy heart, she signed, resigning to her fate. Resigned to her fate. Confined to the dustbin of history. <clears throat> Stability? The Kaiser and the Chancellor. During a brief was Kaiser, and Elizabeth was sure to support every socialist cause she could. Rather than ruling as an emperor, she seemed more fit to be an organizer of trade unions and an agitator for the Red Traders. Thankfully, our new Kaiser and His Majesty Franz Ferdinand has uh, no intention of being crowned a Republican. Already, he has endorsed Chancellor Arthur Möller von den Broek on multiple occasions, while previous misguided governments tried their best to submit to the will of the people. We bet no better. The Chancellor's com committed to now weekly, sometimes daily briefings and meetings with His Majesty, much like the prime British Prime Ministers do with their own king. Hand in hand, a Kaiser and Chancellor will steer Germany on the right path of strength and righteousness. Reds in the British Parliament. Oh, crap. A uh, new Kaiser, a new beginning. <clears throat> oh, the sweet feeling of power, knowing that one's nation rested upon the final word of its ruler. Germany was no exception, with Franz Ferdinand proclaimed Germany in the newest Kaiser after Rudolf's application. Many aren't surprised by the direction this seemingly new Germany was taking. As for Ferdinand's coronation, it was nothing short of grand, held in the historic castle of Friedberg. The event has housed well over a hundred guests across Europe from various royal families, with the most intriguing moment of the night, festive night, being Ferdinand's speech. Whilst rather short, he made clear that Germany had a grand ambitions that rivaled that of the Empress, empires of old, finally closing his speech with a few captivating words, of Germany to be the shepherd of continental Europe, then she shall do as she pleases. The crowd erupted in a thunderous applause, and the coronation continued late into the night. Long live Franz Ferdinand II. And solving the Long Depression. Germany has been struck in the Great Depression, been stuck there for years now. Millions of honest German citizens go hungry looking for work that does not exist. Women can barely afford to feed their children. Factories are idle, homes foreclosed, discontent rising nationwide, there's no way to run a country. Chancellor von den Broek has an ambitious plan to revive the German economy and restore us to a proper position as the world's premier economic powerhouse. Well, some might criticize our measures as ironically rather socialistic. We know that the only strong hand of the state can save us from socialism and poverty. First, we must institute a provisional hike in taxation across the board in order to pay off our debts and ensure we can balance budget for a more sound economic future. Secondly, the economic ministry will be given additional powers to provide economic stimulus to expanding businesses, boarding a strong alliance with the capitalist class, even as we institute many elements of a planned economy, albeit temporarily. Certainly, the road ahead will be harsh and not without opposition, but no, until no honest dreamers left hungry and jealous are working at end, and we're led by a certain Ferdinand II. A clash of ideals. Germany has changed not for the better. Before Kaiser Rudolf, we were strong in united, unified culture. One that devalued tradition and faith. We enjoyed German music and German food. Women knew their place, taking care of the children and looking and cooking the meals for those hard-working men who provided for their families. Now, the old fools allowed our society to be corrupted. Those fleeing France and Russia turned up at our nation's doorstep, bringing with them Russia's drunken toxins of France's horrific taste in cinema. Women roamed the streets, smoking and drinking while flaunting around their hair and bodies like prostitutes. 
with each passing day. It seems like our once glorious nation was doomed towards decadence, corruption, and anarchism, but now we have a fighting chance to save Germany. Action must be taken to ensure that this corrupting ideology be swept aside and paved the way for a united and strong Germany, like was formed in the aftermath of the Franco-German Franco War of 1870. There is to be resistance, of course, for people who would desperately hold on to their way of life, even as it rots for them, but we will show them the way, whether they want it or not. Dock workers in Kuzlin demand higher salaries. In Kuzlin, the German city on the Baltic coast, and one of the few industrial cities between the coastal cities of Stettin and Township. It's a very busy city with a good economy and could have a bright future ahead of it, but recently, it's come to the attention of the role of the, in the industrial north of the city. The workers are being harshly mistreated, and it's not news in and of itself. This happens everywhere, but the actions of the workers took in order to demand better working conditions and higher wages. They want to protest. Organize all factory workers to go on strike for one week, basically crippling the financial capabilities of the factory owners, and some are close to bankruptcy and are begging for them to come back. Others are doing fine. They know now halfway through the week and have been wanting re wanted responses and offers come from various factory owners, but the workers say that they're not happy till all the factory owners too agree to their terms. Results are mixed thus far. No one gets left behind. Well, you know the economy. Are we even building ships? Mm, no one gets left behind. A talk with the Kaiser. Arthur Muller von den Brock had spent the last two hours debating the social, political, and economic policy of the German nation with Ferdinand. Both had come to the resolute agreement that this new Germany would pursue rather than expansion, rather expansionist policies, justifying their options or opinions by pointing out the burden the nation has led in European politics. Then came the discussion around the ideal German culture and what Arthur and Ferdinand would consider to be a good German. Immediately, they agreed that what family would, would play a pivotal role in their shared vision of Germany, with conservative values being the foundation upon which these families would function. For hours, they discussed the nitty-gritty details of the policies until they had created what they believed to be the perfect plan for the German people and the nation, but with a quick stroke of the pen. Both Ferdinand and Arthur again signed their jointly created document. A few hours later, the plan of national reconstruction and rejuvenation had been ratified. A new German century has now begun. Germany will be revived in body and spirit. Hessian unwrestled decreased by 10, but Austrian unwrestled decreased by 10. And also, we're currently doing modernism, more like degeneracy, so we uh, remove the a little bit of the liberty and resistance. Modern art, degenerative music, risque clothing, atheism, our nation is being affected by a plague of terrible ideas under the guise of modernity and progress. We are not opposed to progress, that is. Economic progress, national progress, technological progress, and so on. What we cannot tolerate is a disgusting trend of modernism, what new supporters call social progress. Why do we need such ideas? They are degenerate, individualistic, and encourage defiance against the teachings of the Holy Church and owe disobedience to the law. Every citizen must know that the degenerate behavior is not only a threat to their own health and well-being, but an attack on the moral health of Germany as a whole. Modernism is rot. Degeneracy is treason. We don't need these foreign ideas when our people have 1,000 years of German culture to celebrate. In which, <clears throat> eventually we'll get there, and the roots are, our roots are war. Ooh. In the meantime, though, um, even though we did this several times, the form rate really isn't doing anything. About hitting percent, so we still have zero percent. So I don't know if this is bugged or not, but it doesn't. We're not doing anything here, so this kind of sucks. And then the culture comp. Germany's post-war political scene can be a boast. described as chaotic. Some have been mockingly called it politics by assassination due to the myriad of left and right-wing political killings since the war's end. Well, normally this would be an issue to be resolved over time. We must deal with our own internal factionalism if we are to be prepared for an inevitable French attack. Each mission completed will reduce the level of political violence. Completing every mission will remove the national spirit entirely. Rhineland, Jacobins, Saxon, Vienna, Czech Legion, Alsace National Alliance. Also, uh, Irish state is here too. Irish Commonwealth. And I sent volunteers to uh, Romania to see, because they're currently kind of doing the Great Balkan War. I don't know who to send supporters to. I just went with whoever liked us the least or the best, liked us the most. So I just went with Romania. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And, ooh, actually, what do we have down here? The Italian Social Revolutionary Front versus... Ferdinand the third and China has pretty much exploded. Oh, the Empire of the Great Qing is not looking so good anymore, but and then these guys are fighting, of course, Nicholas the Second. Scourge of the Motherland. Students in Munich protest. Oh Munster, not Munich, but Munster. Munster claims the town of being the biggest university city in Germany. The best students of all subjects come from all over Germany to the city to advance their minds and become some sort of valued members of our society. So what could they be angry about? The economic stagnation underperformance of the last years hit it all. Sectors here including education. Universities lost their glamour over the last years. Deeply needing re renovations are being put on hold. A new advances in technology reach the lecture halls far too late, and too many teachers have been carelessly fired. But since the Münster, their frustrations have reached a boiling point. Now they've largely stopped their studies and protests on the streets about the state of education in Germany. Are the problems to be respected? Because the German education standards are already some of the highest in the world. Hmm. Rhenish on the Russell Bridge, Kriesbitt. Uh, Rheinland. 
40. It's already pretty high, pretty much all over the place. Well, who needed political power? Bavarian Enterprises trade spot raised taxes. A new law which passed a few days ago in the region of Bavaria led to various effects on the population, but most importantly raised all taxes about 25%. Holy crap! Bavarian Enterprises and the local population are furious with this change and demand to be reverted immediately. One of Enterprises and some private citizens have even stated that they won't be paying taxes until the change is undone. Others are also considering doing this. The local government said that this change has been done because of the changing political and industrial landscape throughout Germany and Europe. Thus, Bavaria shouldn't lag behind each other to industrialize. They've also said that if a large group of people don't pay their taxes, they'll be all arrested, but they've also stated that both not paying taxes and the arrest will put a strain on the Bavarian finances. The local government is still unsure of this and are waiting for a good call to put the decision up. In some, mm, I definitely don't want to be any higher. So, does that help us hurt us? No, it doesn't really help us at all. This kind of sucks. German culture movement and Breslau outrage over sympathetic stance towards the Poles. In a paper written by the city of Breslau, a German culture movement called the WDKG, <coughs> Vestuage Culture Gemeinschaft, the West German Culture Community. This community was set up by the Christian Conservatives in 1920 in the city to counter the growth of Polish sentiment and nationalism in the city. Especially after 1928, this group began to take more shape when the Russian government announced its support for the Polish claims. Because of the rising tensions on the European continent, this community has recently started a riot on the street and have publicly stated their opposition to the rising sympathy for the Poles which have recently swept the city and the nation in the papers. The director and manager of the community and the, uh, the newspaper has been asked multiple times to take down his statement and apologize in the name of the both local newspaper and the name of the WDKG, but has not yet done so. Local politicians are unhappy with the director and the group and have issued a statement of a national newspaper, after which the national government caught wind of it, which said to be discussing the matter. Hmm. We take it 40. How much political power can we lose? Also, we did help Romania quite a bit. They did beat, we did help them beat Bulgaria. Additionally, now I realize, and I figured out, that we come down here. We're actually now in the interwar era for the military. We were the Great War era military. I don't want to pickle help us so badly. But now we're here because we're in development here, and we're trying to get more reforms. Each time we do this, it actually does have an effect, which is not bugged. But I just didn't know we actually had some sort of social development. Stabbed in the back. Our victory in the Great War granted Germany a well-earned peace in a rightful place at the very top of the world pecking order. Yet now, our old enemies in France rearm and prepare for revenge. Though the French alone will be no match for our armies, our former allies in Russia return to their old treasonous ways. Just as they stole Galicia from us a century ago, they now prepare to betray us and steal our nation from us. This unfortunate state of affairs can only be explained in one way. We've been stabbed in the back by social liberals and other traitors who would abandon their German brothers for the lure of rewards or in rewards from foreign powers. So long as the traitors among us have not been rooted out, Germany cannot be safe against her enemies abroad, which will actually help us out. We lose some stability, but we get some stability. Overall, not bad. Beginning of the Great Militarization. Across Europe, our old enemies rearm and prepare for a war like the, the likes of which the world has never seen. Duopods and quadrupods, warplanes, uh, capable of turning cities into dust, deadly gases, even drugs that make the average soldier fight with the strength of ten men. Germany must respond in kind of order to claim the victory in this coming, and enforce, coming conflict and enforce their will over Europe once and for all. Working hours must be increased, consumer workshops retooled in arsenals of war, and every spare cent put into expanding and equipping our armed forces for the many harsh trials ahead. Although our sacrifices will be many, there is no cost too great to pay for the future of our fatherland. Stabbed in the back. Always stabbed into the back. New technology. Oh, of course, we're trying to get some terror weapons. I don't think that's really worth it right now. But we'll do it anyways, because that's a, like a lot of fun. And then a pure cultural identity. Or this one first. Ooh, ooh rewards for the aristocracy for that long? Not bad. Remove Bundestag gridlock. Beginning the great militarization and a pure cultural identity. Uh, probably getting rid of this one. This one first would be good to do. Decision cost reduced un unrest, and the Volkshaft will be reduced and made all the same. Okay, a pure cultural identity, why not? <clears throat> Germany has been the home of the finest art, music, philosophy, and science of Europe. Perhaps all the world for centuries. Our history is one filled with countless glories. Our Christian faith has brought us the favor of God against the trends of atheism, weakness, and degeneracy. Why should we import foreign values and ways of life into our nation? Let us censor these things that are un-German and purge the rot that has so terribly affected our people. Let government in cooperation with local officials, clerics, and the centers of culture and art have decided to offer the German people an alternative across the nation. The National Culture Festivals are being organized in the city squares and parish churches. German sculpture will read from the great German authors and poets like von Goethe, Schiller, Heine, and Hegel, along with the Bible for proper moral guidance. Germany shall once again be a home of culture and civilization. Civilization, I should really say. Not much political power every day, but that's alright. If we get encircled here, that would be really bad. So please, don't be dumb. 
Local Dusseldorfers oppose expansion of arms factories. In Dusseldorf today, a group of West of workers, politicians, and citizens protested against the construction of a new arms factory in the industrial sector of the city. They say they oppose the building of the arms factories as they can barely see the sky as it is. And this only adds to that feeling of isolation. A great deal of pressure is being put on the owner of the not yet constructed factory, as he's also a local politician who is the leading candidate for the Liberal Party. We in the past have talked about the stopping the building of the new factories in the city and its districts. Because of his role as a politician, the local government has been ineffective with handling the situation and has addressed the national government to make the choice for him. Delay the construction. And where is this one? In Rhine Rhineland? Fine. Can they pierce us? Oh, no, we can pierce them. That's good. Good. So good. Nice. Actually, if anything. Didn't quite kill them off, but we are getting there. We can see them right across the board from Vienna. More division in speed and attack, which is very nice. Underperforming economy, which sucks. A fully westernized nation, of course. Combat seems to take quite a while on this mod. Ledger. Oh. Vietnam. Okay. Peace with honor. Okay. Looks like we still have the same thing here. Pretty normal. Nothing really changed the land doctrine, which is fine. Whatever. Um. Something happened there. Centralization with no compromises. The German government, uh, at least on paper, rules from Frankfurt. For the average German, the laws passed in Frankfurt affect him very little in reality. Germany is a bureaucratic mess, a product of a Byzantine system of states, kingdoms, and even petty duchies, principalities, and free cities that in many cases have evolved little since the Middle Ages. However conservative a government may be, there's a difference between, between being conservative and being uncivilized. We will not offer a compromise on this issue. If the petty kings and princes of the German states wish to maintain any vestiges of power and privilege, they'll submit fully to the f rule of the federal government and enter the 20th century. No longer will things like taxes, military recruitment, and even more mundane things like driver's licenses be left to vary widely between states, where one German nation will act the part. Pact of Thorns. Oh boy. Oh boy. Kind of want to force it to see what would happen, but still. Anti-revolutionary alliance. Political violence, dirt defends, national revolts, scourge the motherlands. We saw revenge for the fallen. Oh boy! Ah, Jean the first. Renewed imperialism. Oh crap! Hope they don't go to war with us anytime soon. The Anti-Hungarian Pact. Not bad. Well, Monstein's doing quite well. Tibor. Similarly. Similarly? Hmm. Hey, we won! I think. Or at least Romania won. Peace Conference. Oh, Yugoslavia is looking like one heck of a thick boy. Holy crap. Well, actually, maybe I should not help them out. Maybe I should have helped out. Whoops, I think that was probably wrong for me to do. I probably should have helped the Hungary instead. Then again, they're vanguards. I know we don't help vanguardists. Treat Belgrade? Holy crap, that's pretty crippling. Because these guys will probably go with other new imperialists. Um, they'll probably go with Russia, which is not good. But that's a... The fattest Yugoslavia I've ever seen, probably. Constantinople is owned by Russia. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, well, that's cool. And our roots are war. A war for loyal supporters. Get more stability that way, which is really good. I'll get rid of that gridlock as well. Words for our loyal supporters. Our heavy hand economic policy should not be taken as an endorsement of anti-capitalism, far from it, in fact. While the SB might wish to break from the capital of power entirely, we understand that the issue is not with the capitalism itself, but with those capitalists that put their own profits over what profits a nation. Despite that, there are those among the elite that have cooperated, cooperated with us in a great national recovery, and probably call themselves German patriots in both word and deed. These are the kinds of people that we need in our 
uh, side, and we shall generously reward them for their talented service and unwavering loyalty to the true German cause. Shooting between socialists and reactionaries in Salzburg all seemed normal on the wedding winding. Wednesday at morning on the Griesgasse in the city of Salzburg. Birds chirped, people came and went, all was well. Two gentlemen met on a bench near the water of the river. They sat down and talked somewhat, then all of a sudden one seemed to be shocked. He reaches into, into his pocket and then shoots the man next to him in the head. Silence is bestowed upon the Griesgasse. A man screams from the nearby bridge and shoots a murder. Before you know it, a gang warden shoots on the boulevard. Death overtakes the oh so quiet area. People are dead, people are confused, and blood everywhere. Many people die, many are injured. The police intervened in the shooting and joined in as a third party. The fight lasts long, with no clear winner coming out after a few hours. The fighting finally stopped when one side ran out of bullets and surrendered. The other side did the same thing. The police arrested both. After checking their walls, both sides were identified as fitting into their ideologies. One side were socialists and the other reactionaries. The police were furious with their respective organizations and even threatened to arrest all members, even ones not organized in the shooting. The decision is not in stone, however, as the local government has agreed to do what? Ban guns? Well, I'll start like it's pretty good already. Increase it by 50. Um, when we do this, Austrian unrest increased by 10. So basically, it's already 25, increased by 15. You know what? We can have out with a political. Just arrest the instigators. A murder in Vienna. Shots ring out in the city center of Vienna this morning as an unidentified, strangely dressed man suddenly fired another at a cafe. Before the strangers could escape, those were apprehended by the local police and taken in for questioning. The man he's targeted, a 44 year old local, certain random lo local nobody, Adolf Hitler, died from his wounds shortly after the attack. Hitler, a local painter of Vienna, artist commune, served as a brief term of service in the Reichsia before being forced to retire due to wounds suffered from a French gas attack. The unidentified stranger who spoke with an abnormal German dialect explained frantically about going to the wrong timeline and showed investigators a series of photos of what appeared to be people behind barbed wire and some kind of large mushroom-shaped explosion. It was explained that he would be indicated for murder, or indicted, indicted, indicted for murder. The man claimed he shouldn't have rounded up his calculations before gunning down the two interviewing officers with a hidden automatic pistol and escaping the police station. Police weren't able to find where the man had escaped to, but did find that he had left a leather jacket with a few personal effects. Among the stranger's possessions, a small black device with a plastic exterior and a button that would open it to reveal a key. Several buttons on the top would cause a small red light to flash as well. The items were handed off to the Evidence Bureau officials the following day, who planned to continue investigating the bizarre murder. How strange. Crazy madman in Hall. A cr madman has about, gone about terrorizing the peaceful streets of Hall today, having said about vandalizing various shops, assaulting random men on the street, and having climbed to the top of a local church, or shouting various obscenities at local law enforcement. It took law enforcement nearly six hours to detain this lunatic who had brought terror and insanity to the peaceful city of Hale. Who is this man? Surprisingly, he's quite well known in the city of Hall as a local performer and director of his own theater. His name is Tom von Kostenhal, a middle-aged man who has been entertaining the loyal visitors of his theaters for years. His stories and plays have received widespread crit critical acclaim for the ability to strike a balance between raw emotions and comedy. He is regarded as one of the greatest entertainers in Germany who would have soon made his first appearance on live TV. What horrible changes occurred in this man's mind that has turned him from one of the greatest up and coming entertainers in Germany to a raving lunatic? It's rumored that the expectations of the shows were constantly growing and eating away his nerves and soul. His most ardent of supporters have turned to cultishly adoring him in ways which to which outsiders would appear more like a mockery. Was it his family issues, his rapidly rising fame, or his peculiarity obsessively or obsessive fan base that caused his precipitous downfall, or might have been all of those factors that drove him to insanity? We might never know that he has regressed into an incoherent state where he just rambles on about weird military accomplishments. Undead people in castles and Vikings, what should we do with him? Look and say something? Oh. Dear God, he escaped. Spoil the. Actually, we get stuff here? We get political power? Hey, it works with me. But right now, I guess we could also do reassuring the Anglo, reassuring the Anglo-Saxon friendship. That's not bad. An empire across the seas. And what else do we have here? Uh, reform the Reich's army, which wouldn't be bad. We can also do status of the economy, which I completely ignored so far. Long-term investments doctrine. And we have victory in Europe. Uh, well, I kind of want to do some of the stuff. Our darkest hour. Germany is in exile. Oh crap. Um, I kind of want to do this one just because we get political power and stability. Now the continent is loaded, loading its guns once more and threatening each other again. It's time to make sure our allies are indeed our allies. And most importantly, our allies, our important allies, are British. We share a royal family, vast ideas of a vast colonial empire, and much more. We must make sure we're standing together against any upcoming enemies. Autobahn Bridge in Bielefeld collapses. A father, mother, and daughter were saved from the wreckage yesterday. Doctors say they'll be okay, but do worry about the daughter's mental health after the incident. The wreckage of the Autobahn near Bielefeld is what caused the misery. Although at this point it's unknown how the incident was caused, the police are starting an investigation of the matter. This part of the road network is quite important as it connects the Ruhr and the middle of Germany, so many people find it should be reconstructed within a week or so. The Ministry of Infrastructure is still stumped by how this managed to happen as this part of the road network has recently been renovated because the old one was very flimsy and also caused incidents but not as bad as this one. Now the national government and the ministry are deciding what to do. 
Begin reconstruction immediately. Relish on the rest. Zoxin is really high. Uh, now we do that one. Also, we do, we do combat gate. Combat gate. Primordial forms. I have no idea how to use this stuff. Should I use this stuff? Should I not? Oh, this looks really cool. This looks really, really flipping cool. And we also have stuff like um, hard suits. As well as Razor Maiden. So tell me what I should use, because I have no idea. No flipping clue what we do here with this stuff. So this looks really cool. Really, really cool. But like I said, I'm, I'm just like, oh crap, what is this? Automax? Great War Aut Automat. Uh, duopod automats. Light duopods? Should, oh my god, just tell me what, what I should use. Tripods? Uh, duopods or quadrupods? Holy crap. That looks really cool. 70 armor? Well, the light ones have six? I know. Yeah, they have six armor for light ones? Or light duopods? These guys have 60? These guys have 70. Soft attack is 20. So, so, oh, these guys have more soft attack than these guys. Now, let me know which ones I should use. These look really, really cool. Because I have no idea. We still have tanks as well, of course. Um, still ahead of time for that stuff. 1936. Flamethrower teams. Is that worth using? Gives you a little more breakthrough. Is that 20 more organization? Huh. Shock jerseys. High voltage electrical waves towards enemies. Marshes, rivers, amphibious. Well, let's go with Dry and True Logistic Companies. Um, holy cow, that looks really cool. Uh, better division organization would be good. We're currently doing reward or loyal supporters. Let's do our roots or war. The Germanic race has always been a martial one. Our heritage of victory stretches back even before the time of Christ, when Arminius led the Germanic tribes to the battle on Route 3. Roman legions sent to oppress the German people. Centuries later, it was Germany that took the mantle of Rome when Charlemagne from the Holy Roman Empire made Germany the center of Europe. Most recently, our victory in the Great War proved that the blood of great warriors still flowed in the veins of Germany's sons, now with war in Europe once again looking like an inevitability. Our people have grown complacent, even pacifistic. The number of domestic woes have left them in a weakened state, and some talk of outright concessions to our enemies in hopes of securing a peace that we know can never come through appeasement. We must remind the German people that we are not a race of appeasers, but a race of warriors, ready to defend the fatherland and crush those who wish to invade our lands and enslave our people. Catastrophe in northern Germany today. Water is coming into the city of Emden. Although the storm which caused the flooding wasn't there suddenly, there's no warning to say that this flooding would occur. As God does not warn his prey, right now the sea is debating what action to take, but they have considered a few options, build a dike or canal, seems like, like seen in other parts of Germany and Holland. Or to simply rebuild the house, lost houses and lands, and simply hope God has mercy. Uh, Hanover and resistance will go down. Hanover. That's at 30. Well, we're just, we just spent uh, like 150 political power to put reduce unrest in all states by 15. So it's going to take some time to reduce all this, but yeah, just go and do that. I mean, it hurts our political power, which really sucks. We don't do economic recovery and the culture comp and get rid of all these people too. I'm not sure if we could actually do take all this stuff, but it's just taking so much time to get rid of all that stuff. But... Uh, as much as I want to do that, because we need to have less uh, than 25 unrest in all states, which, my gosh, it sucks so much. We could also do a final victory, or our new, not final victory, but uh, this one too. End up across seas. Um, hmm. Then false donuts. Uh, stability, air. Yeah. Stats of the economy. Everyone knows that the German economy is practically in shambles and that this has caused many unforeseen consequences is not only the industrial sector, but also the political sector. As political divisions now widespread throughout Germany, hopefully now with the new year we can get back on track and start to slowly recover from the depression and make Germany great again. Actress in Berlin tarred and feathered. The show is going to start soon. You, you're sitting in the Deutsche Theater. Berlin, closed to the front row. You have a beer, a conversation, and company. The lights go out and the lights are focused on the stage. The red curtain opens on it is a beautiful Mariva Silvek. She sparks with joy and wants to start the show, but she says she has something to say before they start. She says she wanted to give her support to a non-conservative party and wish the party all the best luck in the future. Some of the audience booed her, some cheered, but most were silent. The show began and you enjoyed it thoroughly. After the show, you and your friend meet up with some other buddies. You all enjoy a nice night in the pub together and you go home late. Your wife is already asleep. You go brush your teeth, turn on the radio to hear the news starting. This just in, famous actress Samaria Solvek has been assaulted on her way back to her apartment after finishing up her last show of the night. It was already late and the streets were empty. However, two men were waiting for her in the alleyway with a barrel of tar and a bag of feathers. They tried to flirt with her and threw both of the products over her. She was severely hurt and almost blinded by the process. The vigilantes made a quick escape, however, when the actress started to scream, a woman from a nearby house heard her and ran to the streets. She quickly called the emergency service. We were on the spot within a few minutes. They removed some of the tar from her face and took her to the nearest hospital where she is still recovering. The police commander on duty issued a statement where that they're not sure whether Miss Solveig will be able to recover to her fullest, and she might face loss of sight and might never be able to act again. You look at yourself in the mirror, you are flabbergasted. Increased criminal punishment for this crime. Brandenburger unrest. It's 35. Well, we gotta keep it down, so unfortunately. 
we must take another political power hit. Which, God, I hate this so much. I hate getting all this political power sapped away from us. We're good on stability. We're really good on war support now. And our military, at least as long as we're focusing only in one direction, we're okay. But, status of the economy is finished. And I'm not sure if we can go either way now, so... Um, well, I guess you know what? Our new destiny. Long enough we have. The German people have been oppressed, violated, and attacked. We must stand on our feet. We don't need the British. We don't need any allies for that matter. It's important that we defend our great nation all by ourselves and defeat our enemies at every battle, so no matter the cost. There must come a time when the European continent will be dominated by Germany and by Germany alone. Everything shall revolve around us. No one will be able to challenge us, defeat us, or question us. Pretty much. And now here... Alright, we have 83. I want to see what this does, if we can actually do this eventually. Like, target the Czech Legion. So, that hurts our resistance target and stuff like that. Um, in places like this, like Jacobins, uh, where, where's a penalty for this? I don't see a penalty here. Down here, we obviously have this one. Local manpower hurts us too. But, it doesn't seem like so bad. Political violence. Long depression. Red traders would be good to get rid of as well. But I do want to, like, start doing some other stuff, too. I wonder if we can just use the tanks to take these guys out, maybe. There must be a puppet of them. Because if not... I mean, I'd love to do this stuff, too. Once all decisions for stage recovery are complete, we can progress to the next stage. Uh... Um... Actually... Because that'll be good to do. Beginnings of recovery, continuing recovery. The big so we need to do all this stuff before we keep going on. Crap. One, two, three, four. Or we can start doing some more of this stuff. Twenty-five has everything has to be below twenty-five though. Twenty is fine. Forty oh my gosh. And all honestly, we could probably get this stuff done faster than anything else. Because all it costs 120 political power in total. And then we'd have more to pump up our military and industry that way. <sighs> Jesus Christ. And these are not bad. And I do want to get the extra research slot as well, so. I think as much as I want to cut this down, this costs way, way, way too much in my opinion. Uh, I'll probably go this way. Heard political power, way more construction speed though. When removed, you get even more political power too, so. Overall, that's not a bad thing. But after our destiny, ooh, they got logistic companies, which are nice. Um, probably maintenance companies? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Um, an empire across the sea is threatening the Danish. The Danish government, oh, no, oh, we can't do this one yet. Well, I can read it anyways. Has gone too far. The brutal crackdown on the Germanic movement of Kiel is inhumane and, and completely unnecessary. Despite there being one or three radicals, like in every movement, the movement and supporters are very largely peaceful and work together with the democratic mechanisms. The Danish have demonstrated that they're not able to govern German people with, it, with the recent escalation. The United Kingdom of Germany has come to the conclusion that the agreements with the Danish and Kiel governments are not in effect anymore and they have lost their right to rule the region of Holstein. We demand that the region of Holstein becomes a part of the Volkstadt of Hanover, an empire across seas. Our ancestors will be proud. The German people have established the second largest colonial empire in the world, from the jungles in Africa to the beaches in the Pacific. But despite this achievement, our colonies still face numerous issues. The German Pacific government is facing a brutal rebellion in the Philippines, while in Africa the development of our vast lands is limited and profits minimal. Frankfurt needs to get a better picture of the overall situation and choose a part of which part of the empire needs to be reinforced. Eastern Fleet. Expand the Australi garrisons. Versus stick with Groner. Donuts. African Railways. German Settler Initiative. Regardless, invest in the colonies. The Ashanti Purchase. <clears throat> Congo Resource Rights. Modernize Colonial Armed Forces. That's not bad. Kaiser Alicia Conference. Liberal politician shot and killed in Wilsburg. Shocking news hit the front page today. From the region of Bavaria, blood has hit the window of the Julius Maximus well, Maximilian's University in Wilsburg. Oh boy. Um, in this case, the blood of an influential liberal politician, uh, Franz Schotter. Uh, he was shot this morning at 7 o'clock in the morning when pa walking past the university to a nearby bakery. The assassin has been caught by the local police and is believed to be a radical opposer to the current German government after the police took a glance at his past records. He's been arrested for petty crimes and has spent his time in a mental facility near Munich when he was released a few weeks prior, from which he returned to his hometown of Wilsburg and made the decision sadly some people had to witness. The police have also said they believe he wasn't acting alone, that this action was not just because of his illness. They believe someone talked to him into doing this. However, there's not yet any evidence to support this claim. The witnesses say that not even the Great War compares to the way Mr. Schotter was murdered. So brutal, so toughless. 
and so inhumane. It has been rumored that a kid present during the murder was watching it happen and hadn't left his room since. Local government is deciding whether to bring the man to justice or whether to hang him because of his crimes. No choice will seem to be made anytime soon. The public is firmly against justice and wants his head off, even maybe with a public execution. However, local government has no response yet to come to this idea. As a response to this, the German national government announced plans to oppress it and damage the radical parties even more. Anti-French sentiments also rising as people are starting to speculate they were behind the assassination. Uh, Bavaria. Actually, that's what's up. We lose political power, but we still get some, uh, we get a lower their unrest, which is actually very, very good. Empire across the seas. Crap, reinforced done it. Exploit rare earth materials, which is very good. Place Jingdao under Pacific control. We get political power. Oil production for the Asian Navy. Our green slice of the Sahara. We lose manpower. Unite the African colonies. Demand loyalty for French Australians. I'll be honest, man. I see a woman in a bikini. I gotta kind of go that way. So I apologize to Durnitz. Next time we do this, we'll probably reinforce Durnitz. We'll probably stick with Gruner. Despite Durnitz's pleas for aid, there's a prospect of a domino effect in the Pacific from one lousy rebellion is rather paranoid at best. No, we must focus our attention on already resource-rich colonies. With the right development, so we have a literal gold mine in our grasp. And it makes more sense, too, because if we go from mainland Germany all the way down to the Pacific, there's a lot of areas here that we cannot control or patrol. If we lose that area, but we still have Africa, it's much easier to get to Africa than the Pacific. Sorry, Durnitz. Uh, but it is what it is. If we continue to build up now, I don't know what year we're going to end up trying to kill each other off in, but uh, we're not ready yet. We're just really, really, just really not ready. And I know these guys are not really ready either. Oh, they have state Catholicism and the Octometra. We know literally nothing about the French, god dang it. I hope we'll be ready for this war, though. My god, I hope we're ready. But our destiny. The German Sentry. Oh, look at this. Germany and Europe were not alone. Despite being cornered on two sides by the two great powers, there are several nations of Europe who resist extremist imperialist hawks and help us fight them. However, there are also other nations who sympathize with them or take the opportunity to backstab us. We have to be ready for anything that might happen. Treaty with Hungary. Except the treaty as they are direly need to renew their industry and national influence. Ultimatum Yugoslavia. Oh, well, I helped the wrong people then. Causing instability there. Questionable support in Schleswig Holstein. Help out the Polish military. Huh. Causing instability there. So with this one, the pro-German organization in Holstein is somewhat short of money and general equipment. We can help them out with that. There are also some orders for security equipment to protect himself. What they do with that equipment is not a concern. And then we can do that one too. Arthur Müller von den Bruck believes that the German state has a responsibility to protect all German people, even those outside its borders. The government believes that the time is right that Holstein should be incorporated into the German nation and leave its Danish overlord. Oh, and this has to happen within a year. In order for this to happen, uh, several pro-German organizations in Holstein will receive direct and official support from the German government. The government of Holstein and Copenhagen will experience a rise in German independence movements in the next few weeks. With high chances, the Danish, uh, Danish government might respond poorly to these movements and increase their support. Whether these movements have become too big, will intervene in the affairs of the Danish state on behalf of the German people. The cost for recent state. Uh, as much as I want to do this stuff immediately, we need 50 for this. Can we actually do this now? Questionable support. I mean, if we invade, we should be able to do pretty darn well, right? Um, we could try it, maybe. Save first, perhaps? I feel like this episode's lasted quite a while. But then again, I've been playing this a lot off-screen. So, let's see what happens. Oh, not this one. Uh, it has to be before 1936. What happened in 1935, everybody? What is this? Oh, oh, we can always look at this one. That's kind of nice. We're still putting up more civvies, which is nice, too. Even though we could use more millies at this point. Yeah. Ah. Oh. German Africa, a continent of opportunities. Our new our African colonies are the pride of our empire, uh, resource rich, millions of potential new laborers, unlimited farmland, unexplored lands, explore, and so much more, but let's look away from the vacation posters and slogans and learn about the real situation in Africa. German colonial Afri Central Africa is our biggest colony in size, but size is not really equal value. Despite owning them now for several decades, the development inside the colony is remarkably slow, especially in the hinterlands. We took great pride in getting a corridor from east to west, but there are no real transportation ways to get from Le Libreville to Dar es Salaam on the ground. And instead of facing this challenge, we supported the United Kingdom with a geo-forming project in Africa allowing Lake Chad to its ancient times and create a new future of farmland. A new capital is needed in the most promising region of Africa. In our southern colony, great discoveries have been 
been made. Large amounts of rare materials like nickel, tin, and chromium have been found, and a lot more can be excavated with modern equipment and infrastructure. However, the administration in Sweet West Africa has a rather brutal administration regarding its native population, and for further increased mining, we must stabilize the colony. There are so many more problems settlers, civilization of the Africans, the state of the armed forces, and the borders, and so much more, but the colony has potential, potential we can overlook. I love the jungles. Massive floods in the Rhineland Palatinate. Consequences of a harsh flood or storm a few days ago can now be seen in the region of Germany called the Rhineland Palatinate. In this region lies a heavily industrialized Ruhr Valley. This valley is the heart of the German economy and now is partially flooded. Homes have been destroyed, factories have turned into ruins, and infrastructure looks like it has been seen a war. And in and around the valley, access has been cut off from various cities such as Bonn, Köln, Dusseldorf, and many more towns and villages. The people and the local government have all asked for aid from the national government who is still discussing the matter. And the answer is no. Rhenish. Why is it always a Rhineland? If it goes up to 30, we get 50. If we lose this, uh, there's a chance of being increased by 10. That means we'll never deal with that again, hopefully. For the love of God, we better not, never have to deal with it again. German Pacific, preparing for, against a coming storm. Well, since we're here, I have to wait anyways. Reform the Reich's army. Since a victory in the Great War, the Reich's army has sadly been allowed to decay over the last couple years. Our journals become complacent. Believing the tactics that gods through the bloodshed of the Great War will surely get us to another. They cannot be more wrong. Spies in Paris and Moscow tell of terrifying new weapons and radical schools of military thought. Drastic changes is in order if we are not to be swept away to the dustbin of history. But the Pacific colonies are in a far less profitable situation than our African ones. We could control the majority of the islands of the Pacific and hold the northern flank against any Jacobin expansion from Japan. In the Pacific, the question is not if we can develop these colonies rather than how much are we willing to reinforce them. After the Great War, we gained the Philippines from the Spanish to increase our realms in the Pacific theater. At first, we thought that the colony with strong European cultural ties would be easy to control. However, it seems like they are quite resistant to our presence, and even a small rebellion has broken out in December of 1932. The future of the Philippines will be decided by the ash actions of Dunant and the government in Frankfurt if it so chooses. The most important factor in the theater of war uh, of the world is always Japan. Since the Jacobin Revolution, people fear that Japan could escalate the demands of the liberation of the Pacific. Due to this, Dunant demands greater reinforcements to the eastern forces. It requires naval bases, fortifications, stockpiles, ships. Dockyards, fuel, and so much more to defend against a glooming Japanese threat, as he calls it. Several gentlemen here wonder if the, plain, if the claims of Jonas already be taken serious, and we're not just hysteria. It seems like that even if Japan would do the most unthinkable, that would never get past the British Islands and their navy, and so it's seen as a necessity to reinforce the Far East. However, there still might be problems in the former French colony, Australia. The Republic of Australia appears to be quite bitter about their defeat and losses in the Great War, and some say they regarded themselves as part of the French Rome. If this is true, then we would have a huge security risk next to our new naval base in Australia. We have to stand together against the coming storm. And we'll see what happens with the growing, causing instability in Schleswig-Holstein. The focus of our colonial investments. What is our focus on the colonial matters in the next few years? Grunner promises great profits and a bright future in the African colonies, but Dunant's warns about the threats of the Far East, which could risk our influence in East Asia. The choice lies with us here in Frankfurt. Should our greatest colonial investments be directed towards the African continent, or should we direct them to the Pacific? Africa is the future. Hopefully we get something here to happen. So now we can stick with Grona. Yeah. This is the way we want to go. If you want to read this again, please go ahead, but still. Support the Reform Group. Support the traditionalist. Hadrish is an admiral. Oh. Mobility is a future. Deep defense. Oh, uh, where does Kriegsflotte? Race in the War of Attrition. Von Richthofen's Air Integrity. Well, I guess we're not going to go this way. Be fleet and being. Well, yeah, we're going that way, so. Mm. The violence in Kiel has escalated. I guess we'll do this one next, see what happens. I don't know. Let's look at the Guna. African Railways. Invest in the colonies. I did want to do that. I just have two down here, too. We need 50. We just need more political power. Jesus Christ. Aye. A German Europe. Not bad. African railways sound like fun, though. Trying to feed the Mockley family? Infrastructure and civvies. Um. Victory in Europe. Support 
the traditionalists. Well, I'll give political power this way, too. Although we do not frown upon the idea of an evolution and innovation in all sectors of the military, we strongly believe that the old tactics will serve the German nations the best, and shall ensure success in any battle or war we may face in the future. And currently, it's already February, which is not bad. We still have, like, ten months left for this year, but still. Oh, yeah, we're also researching stimulants as well. Division speed. Less resistance growth, less army speed. I don't know about that. Uh, reconnaissance. More losses, which I don't like. I refuse to hurt organization. Um, anything else? No. Support equipment? No. Armor? I don't know. Any augmentations? Uh, like I said, I'll let you guys decide that stuff. 35. Live water can now be deployed. Toxin chemicals. Uh, let's just do some resource extraction. Why not? Something easy. Stick with Gruna. Oh, another battleship or dreadnought. And another capital ship or uh, other ship too. Nice, not bad. Other than that, we're doing alright. The Imperial powers, wow. So Britain and France. German Central Africa, Sudwest Africa. Oh, Kingdom of Deesland, Alexander the First, look at that. New Republic. Goshen, Natalia, Swaziland, Sweet West Africa. Oh, the Portuguese Kingdom in Exile. The Divine Kingdom of Portugal. Of course, these guys over here. These guys have been slowly taking more land, it looks like. Political discussion ends in brawl in Frankfurt. Political politicians descend into violence as a brawl breaks out as a few parties in the city of Frankfurt decide to gather and discuss some matters. However, it seems qu quickly they can never agree on anything. <clears throat> People assume this is all because they associate with different ideologies, um, and thus their ideas conflict. Now, this wasn't. Uh, the thought of before the meeting took place is unknown. The police eventually intervened uh, in the fighting and arrested all attending members who would be questioned individually. How the fight exactly started is still unknown, but bystanders suspect it was because of the topic social reform, at which point one of the members threw at an orange at another person in the room, thus starting a fight. The police have not yet issued a statement which says whether all members will be trod or only only the ones that were fighting when the police entered. Hessian. Hess. This time, Hess. Oops. Wait, where's Hess? Hanover, Saxon, Frankfurt, Rhineland. Well, crap. Hmm. Uh, well, without Hess. Is Hess even on the board? I can't even tell, so we just do that. God dang it, that sucks so much. Elsass is so flipping high. Jesus Christ. Uh, so, I guess the next... The order of business is this. We will go with this one to see what we can do about this and blowing up the situation here. And then... We'll keep doing the economy stuff as well. Actually, do we get any more political power from this stuff at all? The War of Attrition. Operational Integrity. Ace Generation Chance. Not really. Operational integrity is okay. Never another Paris. You lose attack, huh? You get more defense, though. Desiring only the bravest soldiers. You get more attack, but you lose the organization and recovery rate, huh? Well, it's give and take. Hmm. Hmm. You know, the African colonies. I kind of like that one too. Let's invest in the colonies. Well, our colonies have shown a great deal of potential, some of which have already been realized. There's still so much more they can provide. The only way to ensure that we tap into this economic potential is to put money into development in the region. It may seem counterintuitive, but you have to spend money, of course, to make money. And that'll probably be the last one we do. Uh, we'll support traditionalists and, and we'll try to blow up uh, Schleswig. Holstein. Yeah, it takes 20 days for that, which is fine. It's already April, which kind of sucks for us, but whatever. And we're still losing some fuel, and we're almost at zero. Unrest so much. My goodness, I don't like this. It really takes forever to get anything done. There you go. Now we should be able to do stuff in there, right? And invest in colonies, and then African railways. One of the major developments uh, that are lacking in our colonies is railway infrastructure. A plan has already been proposed to link our various African holdings together through the vast railway network. If completely, transportation of labor and resources will be a matter of the days instead of weeks or months. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. Let me know what you think of the mod so far, and I'll see you tomorrow. 
we'll probably end up in a whole big old continental war. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.